talk uh, just in general about some issues uh, that we think that you might want to hear about. And uh, we have Dr. Cynthia Harper with us today. We're just now going live on YouTube, getting everything set up. So welcome uh, in the room. Please maintain your mute status unless you have a question. We also got a poll here, a fun poll you can take. And uh, just to give us some, some background on your companies. Okay, so we are live on, on uh, YouTube, just for everyone to be aware of and uh, for privacy reasons. Get started here in just a minute. Thank you, everybody, for joining us on YouTube Live as well, if, you are, if you're at that location. If you have a question, uh, we're not able to respond to those questions there. So uh, pop into the actual uh, Zoom link, and you're able to have a live conversation with us this morning. I'm going to start welcoming everybody here. We'll give everybody just a few minutes to get into the room. We never know. Uh, sometimes we get 100 people like we did last week, Cynthia, or sometimes we get two people. We just never know. So we want to make ourselves available uh, to our membership on a routine basis. Uh, our GovSchool classes coming up as we're waiting. And you can always go to govschool.com and learn more about these classes. We're going to do one this afternoon on set-asides and in uh, the remaining part of the week, to, uh, we're having other topics. We'll be soon talking about disaster contracting. And for those of you who might, I mean, in fact, most of us all nowadays work in disaster spending, and that's a uh, different type of government contracting. You need to be prepared uh, whenever, uh, beforehand. There's really kind of three stages of disasters that are out there, and that's uh, one of those is preparation. And that's where we want to focus our attention on. But then, you know, they had the active stage and the award stage. And we'll discuss that, those as well, but we want you ready first, okay? And and uh, it seems like nowadays, it, you know, the whole season, every season is is going to be a, is a disaster season. We used to it, it was more hurricane season. That's what we were concerned about. But now it's all over. And then we'll be talking, um, we'll have a boot camp uh, tomorrow. And if you uh, want to, you know, a two-hour intensive session on really how it really works, uh, give Dale contact a, a um a call today and she'll slot you in that class. It's a, it's a good class that uh, individuals like to participate. Next Tuesday, we'll be doing the RFP again. That's a one that's very popular. We had yesterday, a uh, good 50 plus of you set in, learn more about how to read an RFP and, and it's just a topic of general concern to you. Individuals kind of still come into the room. We'll just give a couple of minutes. It's a, you know, it's a casual conversation today. I have asked you to Take a quick poll if you like, and just tell us a little bit more about, you know, a, a couple of items that we're going to be we'll be uh, sharing with you today. One is the capability statement itself, where you're at, and if you have one, you know, I'm asking com that you're completed and ready to share, or maybe that you're planning to do soon. But we all have, you know, those procrastinators out there. And then, what is a capability statement? Some of you are not even sure, and so we'd like to know. Uh, we're going to help help you understand those. And then the request for proposal. You know, I, I routinely, even this morning, I was up a little early in the office or picking up phone calls. I had somebody at 7 a.m. said the first question is, what is an RFP? And so maybe that's the person there who just checked that. So we'll see. And Cynthia and I are going to talk together. And I do want to welcome you here to Gov School. It's a service of Gov Directions. Uh, we've been in this sector since 1998. We, just, we have about 116,000 members who are use our sites in some capacity. And so we want to thank you for putting your trust into uh, to our systems uh, our primary objective is helping you find the contracts that exist, and you will you will um, quickly, hopefully, find a, a match to you using our new service, RFPDelivery.com. If you haven't checked that out, make sure you do. It's at RFPDelivery.com, and it's a, a more geospatial, you know, mapping uh, contracts to where you're at, and so making sure that you're not wasting your your time on pinpointing. That's really a, a, a you know helpful for specifically in our trades and subcontracting area. And, uh, you know, we had had a, somebody asked this question yesterday about subcontracts and they're, they're all over the place in, in our system. And so you make sure you 
you watch for those as, as well. And you can actually sort just subcontracts. And then on top of that, we have new um, intelligence methods to help pinpoint based on keyword functionality, asking questions about the types of bids that you're seeking. Um, and we come to learn you a little bit better. And with the help of, you know, both human intelligence too, uh, our staff, um, and then uh, and others, I see Dale's on here today and she's there always constantly helping you. And maybe Jamie's here and then uh, others who, who who constantly work with our membership. And we want to make sure that you can give us a call and ask us questions. Our primary objective is to is to help you um, find those bids. And then we learned quickly that if we can help you by talking about topical issues like capability statements or how to read an RFP or how to write an RFP, that's going to be up there next Thursday, not tomorrow, but Thursday week with uh, Miss Tammy Bailey Fultz. She's one of the best out there. She's going to, she's teaching you how to you know, write the winning proposal. Um, and then other classes, as if you learn, we can help you do it yourself, then you're going to be more successful. And then the, the, the complete our, our our entire process of helping you and assisting you in this marketplace, we created Gov Advice, and it's a micro consulting platform. We, we bring together consultants like uh, Dr. Cynthia Harper with you who can help you with um, technical questions. And so with that, I'm going to introduce uh, Cynthia. How are you doing today, Cynthia? I am absolutely wonderful. The eve before my birthday, to talk to all these winning um, government contractors. It's exciting to be here. And we are looking forward to just sharing and, and helping each other win at this point. So um, tell me a little bit about yourselves. Tell our group here, what brought, what brought you to this sector? You know, I was um, a budding entrepreneur and I was actually working in corporate America as an executive IT recruiter. And so I started my IT recruiting firm to offer services as recruiting um, IT professionals. And so I began to go around as most people do in market and send my resume to companies, not knowing that I needed a capability statement and just happened to run into one of the most phenomenal organizations at the time was called the Eagle Group. Um, Called Eagle Group. Anyway, this group was founded by Brigadier General Johnson, Walter Johnson. And Mr. Johnson had a huge, huge government contracting agency. He had been military connected. And when he exited out of the military, he came back and he developed relationships everywhere that he had gone. And he began to win contracts all over the country, all over the world. In fact, when they left out of the industry, they did so well they were doing almost a billion dollars a year and was bought out by Lockheed Martin. Well, they were bidding on a contract for um, the, to, to actually win the CDC. They needed, they were one of the major um, agencies, uh, contracting agencies considered. And so they needed female women, they needed um, women who were certified and had designations to participate in their win. And they began to train me and taught me what it was to create a capability statement, um, what it is to become certified. So they walked me through the process and I went and got certified as a woman on business. At that time, a DBE, I, I got an, an MBE and I just trained and I needed those things in order for them to use my capability statement with their contract. Um, the contract was a dual win between the, with the, from the CDC with the Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman. And it was just a great experience. Well, I didn't get as much business as I liked, but, and so I left the business, which I really regret and came back into the industry probably seven or eight years later and um, went back into studying government contracts. And so when, once you get hooked by the bug, it's like, oh, it's hard to let it go. Um, but it's, it's quite interesting. It's not for someone who's looking to win overnight. It is for someone who's willing to put in the work to become um, team players, to understand what it is to be, to understand what it is to be um, on that side, you know, on this side of, of, of winning. So I stayed long enough to learn the business, to consult with it. And now I, I, I do more consulting. And even with that, I get the opportunity to help companies go after major bids. And I've been pretty successful thus far. So I want to say to someone who seems like this is an arduous process, it really can. There's a, it can be. It's a lot of bells and whistles, but it's not when you. It's not if you're going to win. It's when. 
And so now I get to sit under people like Mark, who is an expert, who trusts me to work with some of you all, who's an expert at business intelligence. He's got a full staff and um, teaches me how to actually pursue as well. So that's who I am. I'm just little old Dr. Cynthia Harper, who wanted to be an entrepreneur, knew what I wanted to do, but didn't know exactly how I wanted to enter the market. And so it's been that's amazing. A great, that's, a, that's a great story, Cynthia. I'm glad you shared that with everyone today. You know, in the, a couple buzzwords you used there, good words, the entrepreneurs. I think everybody here uh, has that entrepreneurial bug, you know, starting your own business, being successful uh, and trying and, and, and working at it. You know, you, like you said, staying power, it's important. And you got to have that, uh, you got to have that fortitude really just stay in there and, and keep trying. You know, I've actually, you know, you, you said birthday earlier, your birthday's up. I'm, I'm obviously a little bit older than you and I've, so I've been doing this for a while and some, I think 30 plus years now, but I now have one contract in 34 different states. You know, I, I started, um, yeah. And now really, I think we passed 350 contracts. Some nowadays are literally, I, I, you know, we focus primarily on gov directions and, and um, and all of our other services, but I I came to this reason we started Gov Directions is because it was so difficult to find these contracts, and I said it's got to be a better way. You know, back when back before the internet, in fact, we were just we were working with faxes, and people would set fax out a request, and it, you know, the, the things have changed, and now you know, just going in and, and typing in the keyword, a buzzword, or any kind of word and, and quickly are asking a question into a system and it shoots back a match. It's just, it's like, wow, this is cool, you know? And so yeah. we want to continue to grow that. And then, you know, working toward really selling your company and helping an, uh, everyone understand that. Um, and, and, you know, capability stations itself have been around for a while and, or even the request, you know, a lot of us went in and it's specifically in the federal level in your sound, we used to be FBO.gov or even this small business dynamic search system where we, we in input information about our company. We tell what, what our, our, our expertise is, our subject matter uh, services, and give them some a, a briefing. But now they've become a little bit more formal, and uh, and, and not in that, but with uh, easy to use software and so forth. You get you get a lot more pop, you know. And as you, I think you've used that terminology with me. And so it's yeah. making sure they stand out. So it can't be just a uh, dull, you know, dull Mark Knowles. Uh, page it has to be something that really helps my company uh, stand out against others and so that they not only do they you know send, send me the request for proposal but also sometimes I actually get calls you know I just had one uh, on Friday from someone looking to do business with me again not going to go out to the market uh, based on my capabilities and I have the uniqueness of that but won't you share with everyone and maybe a little bit more about capability statements and how they can use them effectively we'll start with that and ask some questions I'm seeing some questions in the chat box. I want to remind you though, everybody who came in today, if you have a question as we go through, just raise your hand, technically speaking, or interrupt us and we'll stop. Take the fun poll. I'm gonna keep it open for a little bit longer. We just like to see, you know, what the group is knowledge levels are in these topics and be honest. Okay. And then uh, we're going to give away a capability statement to somebody today. Cynthia is going to make that choice. So tell us why you why you need one. And this is a five hundred dollar value uh, for those of you not familiar. In some places they actually charge a lot more. But our, at our system, it's it's uh, typically a five hundred dollar value. So you'll have um, it's a good takeaway. Somebody will somebody will win that. So Cynthia, tell us a little bit more about capability statements. Absolutely. So first of all, don't forget to list your name in the chat. Um, you never know what company you can eventually partner with or learn more about or refer out. Never hesitate when you have a forum like this to bring yourself to the forefront. One of the things about winning a capability statement is that what makes you different and what makes you different in this business is to be bold enough to share your story. Um, I was a little timid when I started, so I didn't know what an award winning capability statement was, but I stayed long enough to get the information. If you notice the little bird um, that's 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 on the top, you know, you don't start out there to, as the winner. And, and look at, that's the bird on number one. The little bird at number five, he's looking, but guess what? He's still looking into what it takes to become the winner. Well, what makes award-winning capability statement is the ability to share your story, the ability to put it on the kind of paper in the content that the government understands, not how we've done it in corporate, not how we've done it in private. It's not the synopsis and all these fancy things. It is the key points that make you attracted to the government. 
So list yourself, you guys, get bold. Say to the person's name ahead of you or three slots beyond you, hey, we do this. Are there any chances that we can partner on something that's coming up? Because there's strength in numbers, and I'm learning that. I was I didn't have the opportunity to do this without a mark, without a good directions. There's strength in numbers. You're not an island to yourself. So let's talk about what makes award-winning capability statement here. I want you all to win. I want to win. And winning doesn't always mean your name is on the top and in the front. And that's why you have to understand what it is to have a trusted partner. So here we go, Mark. Let's see. Can I... Does this give me the autonomy to move? There we go. There you go. There we go. What is a capability statement? Well, you can read that for yourself. But what I'm going to share with you is it is a business profile. It is what you use bold enough to share your story. It's not the traditional resume. It's data taken from the resume that explains or expounds on your subject matter level of expertise. But it is what enhances what you're trying to offer the government. It's not if you're going to win, it's when. And so what this does, this allows other businesses, it allows the government, it allows other professionals to see your highlighted specialty so that you have the ability to win. Mark, talk about that. Talk about a good, and you know what, what, what people like, something that's aesthetically pleasing. Our minds are so busy with so many things, we need to be able to capture things immediately and not spend a lot of time. You all know that no one has two hours to read a capability statement like we used to do with resumes. It just So we pull out the key words. We pull out the things that we're looking for in a case statement. Yeah, so you, you know, there's key words, the buzzword, the words that really um, meet your company. I think in, in one slide we use, we have used in the past, it's basically a, a, um, a, a, a word uh, present, I, think, I forget exactly what, a word cloud. And you go in cloud. there and you take you take all the words that are in your capability statement and you put it into the word cloud. See what really stands out because the word that stands out should be you, okay? It should be your company. And, you know, my uh, situation, I do classification and compensation work. And so it should say classification study. You know, that's just, I want to say it over and over and over again um, in, in the, the document I use. And so it's so important, the words that you use. In, in your document itself. Right. Look, uh, Nanta Carson actually posted um, their capability statement inside the chat. That's good. You can pull that down and make sure that um, maybe that's someone a possibility that we can partner with. This is a, that's an important uh, process. If anytime you go to these type meetings now, there are a lot of these that are online and they have the chat box open so you can ask questions. Just go ahead and take the opportunity to drop your capability statement in there, Absolutely. specifically if you're with a government. Um, it's no different than going to a, a live session where you're talking with uh, folks and and you're handing out your card or it's just, just a new way of doing things. And not only that, it sends a, sig yeah, sends a signal that you're ready to go, that you're innovative and that you're, you're here for serious business. OK, other, you know, I think we talk about some of these things, too, but. You know, I, I teach a class in this topic at a graduate school level. And the, and the first day, the first session I have with my students is like, make sure that, you know, your first name, your last name is prominent there. And the name of your company is there that you can add to that. OK, so you're selling yourself. I saw somebody the other day, maybe they're all here, but I, I talked to them. They had a, a nice um, uh, avatar that really represented their company and, and, and sold them. Now, I don't know sure who's making those now, but that was. I said, that really was cool. It helped them stand out. And so if you have 100 people in a room or 200 sometimes um, with these government uh, sessions, it just really makes your company uh, present itself a little bit better. So we're going to talk about what it's not. And we're going to give a quick shout out. I just happened to pick up Michelle Fields Moore. She's, I, I haven't seen her. In fact, all I see is Mark and myself. But she says that her business is Minding Your Own Business, LLC. I'm a startup consultant company looking to support other small businesses to win government contracts. Hey, folks, there you go. That's a that's an on hand um, um, consultant that could possibly help you. Listen, we're not in competition. We're in cooperation. There's no threat when you see someone who shares similar skills. What it is is someone you need to embrace so that you can come together and win. So, what is not a capability statement? Notice this big. Notice this beautiful, colorful corporate skyline. 
And that's how we used to do business with all of these flowery, great aesthetically pleasing colors and things of that nature. Lovely to look at, right? Well, we need just a little bit of that. And look to the left, my left, you see the, the, the great, wonderful federal building of some kind. That's beautiful, but this is what it's not. It's not these three ply brochures. Your story didn't have to be told that way. The government sees literally per bid, we, we probably see about, mm, people that are working on federal contracts, probably see about 60 people, 80 people that are bidding at the same contract. Do you think they have time to read your three ply brochure? Not at all. But what they do need is that one page or that two page document that gives them the information they're looking for. I love that beautiful, I love the beautiful colorful buildings uh, to the right of me. But the government is not looking for that level of graphics for a capability statement. Mark? You're exactly right. You know, and it's not that we don't need these type documents. They they have a purpose. You know, when you have a booth, for example, at your uh, at, a tra at these reverse trade shows where the government's and that we're getting back to that more and more. Uh, and so those those are important. Not only that, but having that on your website so that you can download it. That's great. But it's not a capability statement. Um, it's right. it, it's not flashy. It's you know it's it's meant to be the capability statement is meant to, meant to be a direct connect between you and the contracting officer, and they want it with specific information. They want you speaking the government lingo, okay? There you they go. expect They expect you to know it. Here we go. This is one of Mark's favorite things, and this is because he offers business intelligence. They want you to understand the lingo, guys. Procurement, bidding, they want you to understand the process of taking over a contract and ending a contract. They need you to understand the lingo that they speak to win. Honestly, it's not like they sit around as a bunch of hard nosed, but they have to narrow down so that, so that what they're looking for is easily for them to obtain. So are you speaking the government lingo with your capability statement? This is what's important. And that's why we consult on these capability statements so that you will be represented well. Because when you win, another small business win. In fact, we know what there are what more small businesses than large businesses. And the government agency is doing so well. Government contracting has offered so much that all the large companies have jumped into this field and going after contracts right alongside you. So what are your capability goals? What they are, you are to be the missing piece. You're the puzzle that they didn't have. You're the little piece that they didn't have in the large scheme of the puzzle. Sometimes you achieve this goal by teaming, partnering. Sometimes you you achieve this goal single-handedly. You, what is your goal when you present your capability statement? You are to be the missing link, and that's why you need to attend the RFP training, the RFQ. You know what? What's the difference in the RFQ, the RFP, the RFI? You need to understand when they talk about dates and government um, contracting accounting processes, a little different than we do in corporate America. Mark, talk about people's capability goals and why they're relevant, understanding okay. their goals. The, the first reason they're relevant is what you just said. First is to make sure that you are re respond in the right way whenever you're um, working with an individual contracting instrument. Okay, you're expected to learn this before as, as a contractor. You know, there is a difference between a request for information and a request for proposal. There's a difference between a source of salt and a solicitation. And so you need to come with that knowledge. And whenever you present your capability statement with any of those instruments, it could slightly be different. And you need to make sure you, you have multiple ways. You know, what I do is I take that PDF document that I have and you can edit it if you need to, and you can add to it and you can change it so that you're speaking specifically to your goal. Your goal might be to expand your market, to get basically even to get on a, a maybe a, a a pre-qualified list. And so that takes a different approach than an, a, a one that you might be sending, submit, submitting to somebody uh, specifically for a solicitation. So know that goal going into it and then make sure the government understands that there's a match. You know, I'm fine, the, one of the, the uh, quotes I always use is, um, is, is uh, I think it's a song by, um, oh, I forget the name of the band now. I do this all the time. 
but it's it, it's the you're the one I wanted to find is the name of the song. And that song needs to be singing in the back of the, your head. But you also want the K contracting officer to do the same thing. So when they pick up your capability statement, it literally sings to them, says you're the one that I wanted to find. And so they they then contact you and engage engage with you. And I can't tell you how important these are when you go to matchmaking events and making sure that you have uh, this document that you can have that. Um, you do have the ability to mark this up, Brenda. So if you're making changes on your screen, uh, that's it's being written on our our system as well. So just so you that you know that, uh, that this technology will overlook that. Um, and so some of us might be want to make just so what I explain to you in Zoom, you can sometimes make notes on documents. Uh, and here we allow you to do that in this closed session because it is closed. OK, um, but it's important that you um, that you have these at your match, matchmaking events and that you're ready to pass it out uh, so that you, specifically whenever they're going in there with contracts in, in pocket, it's called pocket contracts and certain typically below a certain level and volume. And then they can just strike the deal on the on the spot. And they have that as that ability as a contracting officer up to a certain level. And so you want to be ready for those. And so those goals are different. And having your capability statements speak to those goals is important. Hey, Mark, can, let's give a congratulations to Nick Mason. Um, you know, Nick's an acquisition professional. And, and, and that's quite interesting that um, as he used to actually look out for bids, now he's he's in the business for himself. He cast his net into the entrepreneur pool. And so Mark, hey, congratulations, Nick. We appreciate you sharing that information with us. That, that, that's good to know. That is definitely excellent. And since you yeah. use the word acquisition, don't forget you can go to acquisition.gov, okay? Acquisition.gov, that's the FAR, Federal Acquisition Regulations. And we wanna make sure you um, learn. The very first section there is definitions. It's a great way. To, to learn the keywords, the, 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 the words that are being used in government contracting. You know, Cynthia, I can remember when I first started work, my very first interview, I was dealing with something in finance and I went to my uh, interview and the, the person who was interviewing me was asking me all these questions about finance. And I heard all these words and I'm like, I don't have any clue what they're talking about. So I wrote down the words and I, I drove, as I was driving out, um, I picked up a finance dictionary from, from um, but I think it was Barnes and Nobles back then. This is before the internet when you could Google things, but it's uh, or, or search for things. But uh, that's how I came with. <laughs> so make sure you educate yourself and that you're speaking speaking the language. Absolutely. The formatting. The formatting. If someone could remove the red marks that was working previous, that would, that would be fine. So let's talk about formatting. I need you to understand the fonts, the bullets, the word choice, and the color. All of these things are going to be on your one page document for the most part. And when you consider this, don't be in a rush initially because you need to understand what you're creating and you need to understand that everything, all the data on your capability statement. So take your time when you're formatting, what font you want to use, the bullets, the word choice. And that's why it's good to have a, a professional. You know, for, it's so important that you understand um, the pertinent codes. And, oh, oh, far, that's okay. Um, let's, let's just go back to formatting. Formatting is key to your success. It's imperative that you understand what it takes to format your capability statement. Gather all of your data before. Now let's talk about your pertinent codes and certifications. Absolutely key to the success. Uh, because they don't know you. And, and if I submitted something to, to someone in agriculture with the state, they would not know who CRPA was. But if they notice my code saying that I'm an SBA, WOSB, you know, small business administrator, I'm a woman owned small business, they understand that. They, they, they get to know me better. These, you know, acquisition vehicles, um, there's so much to learn about a person and you can learn it from their capability statement. Are you, you know, some of the professional certifications are, are you PMP certified? Are you CPR? Are you LPN? If you're working in a medical contracting, you know, who are you? These pertinent codes and certifications open the door for you. So understand your codes and understand this. Many of us come into the business and we don't have certifications. I didn't have certification when I met with the Eagle Group, but immediately we started my process. 
to become an MBE, which is for corporate, and a DBE, which represented um, the federal government. So know the difference between professional certifications, personal certifications, and then certifications that are conducive to the skill set that management PMP. Understand those different ones that you need to have to possess to be qualified. To, to, to narrow the pool, the circle that you want to go in. Mark, talk about the pertinent codes and the certifications. Well, you know, sometimes I get lost in coach because it really is a fragmented system. So, we, you know, first we start to find the bid. And then whenever you really start learning, you realize that there's all these coding mechanisms, you know, the NATES code, North American Industry Classification System. Uh, that's important at the federal level, specifically for set-aside reasons. So you have to make sure you have the right NATES code within your SAM registration. Of course, local governments and state governments don't use that. The most common there is the NIGP commodity code. But even still, some, that's a proprietary system, uh, meaning that it's copyrightable uh, it, written, and you have to pay to actually use that. And so it's sometimes the governments won't use that. So they have their own other systems that are out there in order to code. You also have the United Nations standardization codes. The SIC, of course, is a standard industry classification and 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 then the product service because when you have products that you're actually uh, selling as well. But helping the government uh, contracting officer understand what you uh, what you provide uh, is important. And you do that through uh, coding mechanisms. And so we don't a lot of times we don't even expect you to learn those beyond that initial phrase of making of building your capability statement. And in fact, that's why you actually use subject matter experts, you've seen a number of them in, in this chat room today, but sometimes bringing in individuals who understand all that coding makes a lot of sense and uh, in, in that process. And even within that, you start then talking about these other uh, certifications, uh, GSA schedule, the acquisition vehicles, and that all becomes important next steps uh, once you get all your coding uh, selections down uh, pat, okay? Um, and of course, don't get overwhelmed. OK, whenever you're seeing all these different acronyms, here, this, this is a whole screen full of acronyms, Cynthia. Maybe you, it's like almost a horror film to some of these <laughs> folks who haven't <laughs> aren't used to it. So hey, don't get Mark. overwhelmed. Everything, everything can be deciphered. If you don't know something, ask. Governments are exactly. there really to help you. They really are. But this yeah, is just a way they, for them to organize yeah. so many. You know, there's over. I just I'll finish with this, but there's like fifteen hundred contractors every day who just decide, or companies who decide that morning, hey, I want to do business with the federal government. And they go and apply. Um, and so this is the way they have to organize, because they're obviously uh, not all going to win government contracts. And, and that's important. We started looking at millions and millions of, of companies that um, they were involved. And so this is the way they help keep that volume organized. So yeah, so I guess you're right, Mark. That could be a bit much for someone who's confused but those are codes and certifications that are pertinent to your success. So maybe we should narrow that down a little bit, huh? We yeah, don't want people to be No, afraid. no, I think it's good. You need to let them know because what next step is they're going to actually try to find that Nate's code. Are you going to explain to them? We help? Yeah, look there. You got the actual um, URL as well. And that Absolutely. wasn't actually um, uh, planned there. I was just wondering. But it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, they can get lost trying to find it. Not only that, but they're going to get marketed to this one. This one company has sent me, I think, five emails today telling me my SAM registration is going to expire, which is just like, what, what are you talking about? At least I understand. But all those folks who don't understand, yeah, they get lost real quick. And then pretty soon they lose five or six hundred dollars out of their pocket and don't yeah. even know what happened. Yeah. So go ahead. Tell them how they can fall into the wrong places. Yeah. So so your codes and, and the government has made everything really self-explanatory. Um, they will show you how to to derive at this information. Your NACE codes, oftentimes people don't understand what their NACE codes are, or they'll choose one NACE code for their entire um, suite of services. That's, that's not a very wise thing to do. So these are proper addresses here to help you find your NACE codes, your PSC codes, your SIC codes, your NIGP codes. And then of course, the government will, will assign you a UEI number. And I need to put up there your cage code. The government will assign these numbers to you, these codes, so that you are identifiable within the system. So let's talk about your NACE codes. Many people would like to put, uh, we do trucking. And let me tell you, transportation is one of the fastest growing industry in the government market. 
It's on fire uh, because trucks, what? They move America. We need trucks. We need transportation systems and all kinds of vehicles for transportation. But you need to understand that you do more than trans just transportation, one NACE code. There are probably, what, Mark, about six to eight solid NACE codes for those that are in transportation, for those nice. that are in medical. Talk about that, Mark. I think we limit ourselves with one, and you can have more than one NACE code. Um, even someone called me yesterday and said, can I have a, two primaries? Well, the government only recognizes one primary, but you can do more than one thing. Go ahead, Mark. No, I agree. And, and making sure you have the right next. I was just going to say, you, like even the, what you just said there about um, transportation, I found I have a company. Uh, there is a bid that's out or RFP route right now that was asked to do with more about specialized transportation haul. And I believe it's, you know, it's, it's classified materials that are being hauled. Uh, and it had its own NAICS code. And I, I had never thought about choosing that, but I had to go back and look it up for them uh, be, because they needed to add it in order to be, you have to add that before they bid on the project and make sure it's it's part of their capabilities. So it's a constant, it's it's something that you need to always investigate and and not uh and and learn. Okay. All right. Let's move on here. Um let's move on. Let's keep it going I know you, you got on your screen here you had UEI. The UEI that's a unique entity ID. That's a new yeah. replacement for a DUNS number for some of you who may not recognize that. You get that at SAM.gov, and that's at the federal level. I just point out that in NATE's codes, UEI, CAGE code, these are really only federal government uh, codes. And it's important for, you know, to understand state and local governments don't use them to have their own coding systems. And so you, you'll learn that. And most of us will do business with state and local government before we do business with the federal government. Um, there's just simply more opportunity. And and let's let's talk about, and I got I probably moved off of that slide a little too fast. Um, state and local government understand that those are the people you can walk in front of and actually present yourself. And you know, people like personality. So if you if you're talking about um, the state that you're in, the city you're in, make sure you know what bids and contracts are available locally where you can go and meet that individual and let them know we are available. We provide these services. We're hands on. Never hesitate to do business on the state and the local government first before you try to do federal. There's nothing wrong with jumping into the federal market, but I'm telling you, you could build more um, past performance with 20, 30, 50, $100,000 contracts than you can with 10 and 15 million. Your chances are slim when you first jump into the market, first one or two years to win a million dollars or $5 million contract, if you've never managed that process before. And I'm okay. a big believer, Cynthia, in, in experiential learning, you know, really getting in there, diving into it. I know a lot of people want to wait for this and wait for that. And I don't, I'm not, I don't, I don't ever advise that. I was like, just go ahead and dive in there. And it's, so it's, but it's easier to um, trip a little bit if you want to trip in front of a local government than it is you know, going after that federal contract, which is going to cost you a lot of money to invest in, um, and, then, and then tripping there. You know, I'd rather fall over a small step than a large step to begin with. And so, yeah. and, you're going to, and you're going to fall. I mean, just, you know, in order to have one 350 contracts, somebody should ask me how many contracts I've actually bid on. It, it takes a lot of, a lot of work a to lot. get to that level. Yeah. And don't hold things so close to your bosom. When I first got into the market, the big deal that I was working on with the CDC and, and Lockheed Martin, I was a minority partner for the other minority company. Well, I didn't have what it, I didn't have everything that was required to manage the IT staffing recruitment as a female company by myself. But I was so nervous to partner with someone else that I really lost out on an opportunity to be a part of a bigger win than bigger than myself. Yeah, so just that's just something to, to remind you of. So let's talk about the six C's of a capability statement. Your company overview, your executive summary. You know, you should know this. How many years of business you've been in? Who did you market to? Um, are you qualified, certified? All these things in your company overview, your legacy company. Are you a, a company with warehousing? You know, your warehouse is secure. 
your company overview just kind of speaks to your level of management. This is your executive summary. Who are you? You should know this without someone um, giving you an answer to that. Okay. What is your company information? The website, your social media. This is real important that this is updated regularly. Things about your company. Have you moved? Did you change your email addresses? This should be current at all times because we often say that a capability statement is a living and breathing document. It doesn't stop just because of the first time it's been created. People reach out to Gov Directions all the time and say, oh, we've won a contract or we've changed this. Um, how do we go in and make this change? Those changes are very important. So keep your company information very relevant and updated, friends. It's important. What are the core competencies? You know, all of us have a core. Um, when people ask me, what do you do? I coach, I consult in the government market, and I'm a professional speaker. Those things I know, they're all centered around communications. So what is your core competencies? What makes up your company? That's your strength. And any of us that work out will know if your core is weak, you're weak. You can do but so much. So understand your core. These are some C's you need to, to, to keep in mind. What is your core expertise and differentiators? What separates you? Are you certified? Are you an expert in X, Y, and Z? What is it that people say that you do at an expert level and you can vouch for it with your past experience, your past performance? You know, well, how do you know this is your core? Well, we offer this to a client, whether you've done business in the federal space or not, you have been a client to someone even if it was a client at work from corporate, at work in the community. You know, who are your customers? What was your past performance with them? How did they view you? It's very important. How did you manage the project for them? What would they say about you? And then your contact information. Now, that's different than, than your, it's similar to your, comp, your company information, but what is your contact information? We change, I, I just got a new email address. And I just wrote, um, sent a letter out to my guide who creates my web presence. I've got a new email. I want to switch out. I want to keep one in email for the government side. And for my speaking, I've created an entire new contact information. Why? I don't want them to cross-reference. I want them to be separate. I want them to be noted as that's who I am, that they can reach me there. And that's who I am. Mark? Talk about these six C's and how relevant they are to the success of an award-winning capability statement. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure if I can add much more than what you've shared. You were direct and to the point. You know, that's one thing that we haven't mentioned already today, but the ABCs of technical writing and how important they are. And uh, but accuracy, brevity, and clarity. And so this is what you need. This is really the, the meat of your capability statement. It needs to fit on one page two pages maximum, but even then you really probably need it. And that should be only if you have a long list of clients that you were trying to share with them, but one page preferably, but having, having a clear your, your company overview, these are the missions. You know, a lot of times when you're having difficulty coming up with the, the language that you need, um, I use, I always give this sort of advice to our, my clients. And one is that, you know, do the grocery store challenge. If you're not quite sure how to explain yourself, Pretend like you're in the grocery store and somebody casually comes up to you and says, now, I know you went out there and started that new company or you have that company. You're trying to win government contracts. Tell me what you do. And and I have a, a document online whenever I help clients set this up. It says, what do you do? And so when you and you just start writing that out or you start talking that out verbally, you know, record that on your iPhone or whatever. Uh, it's just the same type of information that you need to put on your capability statement and then organize it in the right, in the right way. Your core competencies are so important um, that basically tells, you know, who you are, what you do and how you're different than others in your expertise there. And governments will zero in on that part. Everybody always thinks they're going to zero in on your path clients. They're not they're going to zero in on your core competency. Um, and that's the most important part to get that part right. OK, uh, so thank you, Cynthia. Absolutely. So capability statement versions. I think, Mark, I think you do a better job at this part than I do. But let's talk about the capability statement versions, Mark. Let's talk about sometimes, um, you know, hitting the target for 
an RFI versus an RFQ or an RFP. Um, the RFI stands for what? Request for information. There are some times when your capability statement is set up just to target the information that they're looking for in the RFI, okay? Then there's a general capability statement that you kind of use for when they say a request for proposal, when they need um, a proposal fulfilled, when they need it. And also with the general capability, you can use um, a request for proposal. Um, so the request for proposal and the request for quote. Quote is when you quote for them the prices, the services, the overall view of how you're going to procure this contract for the government. And then you have like a sources sought capability statement, which is designated for just a said designation. Now, Mark, I think you hit this right on the target. I put that target there because I feel like you're the target man when it comes to talk <laughs> about the different versions of capability statements. Let's let's go. Let's let's educate them on that. You know, I think you got the primary there. You know, I, the only thing I think I'd add to that really, Cynthia, is that you also need the closing capability statement. I, you know, what I do with mine sometimes is, and we can back more and more would have the pitch. You know, when we get in, you get the past the initial RFP or request for information, and then you're having to make a presentation. And, and, and instead of having them flip through all the documents and get lost, and you're, I've seen this over and over again where, where everyone's trying to find information on tab three, tab I just put my capability statement in front of them and it closes the deal and it talks to them about what I what I'm there for. And I want them focusing on that part as opposed to uh, the presentation that I'm really making and putting that there. So you can have that keeping, you know, I'm a big fan of Google Drives and we do set up Google Drives for our customers. If you give us a call, we can assist you with that. But going in there and one of my tabs, uh, one of my folders is capability statements. And then you have that different ones ready to go and you can modify them. Nowadays, there's no reason why you can't really make a quick modification to it. Keep it in the tech, use technology. I saw there somewhere that the Adobe, you know, they, they, they're they everywhere, it seems like. But they basically have the version of PDF where you can just click on it, make a slight change, and change your language. So take it, doing that and preparing it before you send it off to some woman you requested is, I think, taking that extra time really helps you stand out. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things I want to say as well is, once you've completed it, if you create your own capability statement, you know what they used to tell us in school, four eyes are better than two. Let someone else assess that along with you. We did an assessment with the company last week, and we I think we do we offer that service as well, which is just mm -hmm. kind of a general service, not expensive at all. There were probably eight or nine major things that were not represented on this capability statement. So let someone else view it with you. Every coach needs a coach. Every teacher needs to be taught. So never think that that it's uh, any shade on you to miss out on some information because we all make mistakes. All right, friends. Now, um, the last thing I want to say to you, and I didn't put it on this right here, and I should, but I'm going to go back and straighten this out. I want to remind you, your contact information it is one of the last things I want to remind you of. Whatever you do, whatever you do, don't put on your emails sexymama.com or hot daddy, you know. Make sure that you're on your website that you have a downloadable capability statement. It's imperative that you have a downloadable capability statement so that others can reach, can pull forth that from your website. So a good website, though you are a government um, contractor, you need to have a capability tab, not just about us, the home, the services, but a tab so that you can have a capability statement, a capability um, briefing, which is just an eight point PowerPoint presentation and a capability video. In fact, I'm redoing mine. I'm redoing all of my services so that I will be able, someone can pull down what they're looking for, who I've worked with, what services I've rendered. So I want to remind you of that, that you have all the information. And so there we go with some of our capability statements that Mark keeps in our folders, just to show you some of the examples. And I show examples to our our, cust our members, um, regardless, you know, I think some, maybe there's some individuals in this room are also helping with these. And so we publish some of those as well, just to make sure you're aware of those. You see some differences, but if you need assistance, 
we do have the a phone number there. So as I bounce through here, some of these, but you should be, you know, like this one I, I like, this is the MO, MO and KO. We just recently did, you, did this one, Cynthia. Um, yes. And Jessica Fernandez is the one of, I don't know if she's on the line with us now, but she is our, our primary graphics person now. And she helps us with this. And you um, and you and her I work with that client to to get that really stands out. And if you don't know if this is a tra- trucking company, then you're missing the, we're missing the uh, something because you just really just stands out how, how, um, how uh, their services that they have. And notice they have the UEI, the cage code, Nate's codes. They also have the certifications, their address, easy to, to get to their website now um, in a secure format and so forth. And as you step through some of these, you know, you should have this link. It's available through you, uh, to you um, in our systems. Uh, so you can go there and see some examples, uh, but we frequently show you the examples and how, how they work uh, in uh, for you out there. There are also some how you can learn more about it if you if you use the QR codes. Make it, you know, I've noticed more and more uh, clients are putting QR codes on their actual capability statement. We don't have one on some of ours, but that's becoming a, a, also a tool where you're drawing in the other the contracting officer. And that's important that you're drawing them in. Okay. You have color, two or three colors uh, that pop help it pop, but you've given them link. Now you even pictures of images that are linked through to your website, have a video there. You can take that one page and turn it into volumes and really, you know, the stickiness of it, you know, hold them into the into the conversation uh, in the process of doing this. And so these are just very important. You know, as we're coming to a, a close today, I'll see if anybody has any questions. Uh, one of the things I wanted to share with you is that I dropped in the in the chat box a publication that I've written called the RFP. It's, it talks about the request for proposal. Some of the items I think are important and how to read them. And I like to always give that away as, as we're going into. And Cynthia, as you're looking through, did you see anybody who needs a capability statement you wanted to give to today? Let's see who needs a capability statement. And so this is our giveaway for you guys coming today. But if you have any questions um, and you can reach out to us or you can also, we have, a code that it's only available here online that says save 25 and you can actually uh, use that this isn't a sales uh, uh, um, conversation that we have in the day but it is available to you if you do need that technical assistance there and so this is what i'm going to do but okay so we've got a lot of people who need a capability statement the first person who stu- who sends to me how much money did the government spend last year which is 2022 mm-hmm. Um, in the government market will be the winner of the free capability statement. The first person who responds, how much money did the federal government spend last year in, in the federal market? Okay, Mark, we Anybody got one answer. Four and a half billion, a little higher. A little higher. Let's go over, you know, one place to check? USAspending.gov. Yep. If you're not familiar yep. with this site, this is a great site, completely free to use. And Ikea. in there, I think they actually give a dollar number somewhere. Let's see. So far, the federal government plans to spend. Let's see what pops up. Yeah, I think Michelle. Who hit it on the head first? Was that Michelle? I think so. That's the number. It's actually right now, so far, 4.59 trillion, but the number is 6.27 trillion. That's the what they're. They're arguing about actually at the federal level right now. There's a, hopefully they don't, the government doesn't shut down again, but it is um, an area. So I think Michelle wins this one today. You think so? I think so. Yep, I think Michelle got it first. So um, thank you guys for all participating in that. I, you know, let's go back and also on that. Um, and Michelle, please send me your email. It's at customercare at govdirections.com. And we'll reach out to you on that, uh, on that uh, capability statement. That is a $500 value for this process here. So who has a capability statement? 43% of you have one, okay? 48% are planning to do so. You're waiting on something. Let's not wait too much longer, folks. If you need some help, reach out. Um, we'll give you we'll give you a discount. That just that save 25 is $125 off. So that's a that's a big discount. And then two of you don't even know what they are yet. So you want to, you're brand new and we know that. And we're here to help you with that particular process. And it's important that you understand this is a big part of the SBA. Uh, small business administration, uh, it's small business uh, registry system that the government actually goes to and pulls from in order to reach out to you. So you want to have that right. And then the RFP itself, um, four of you out of 21 have actually written one and submitted a response. 
Um, and the rest of you are still waiting. So take my advice. You know, whenever I work with a client, I say, go ahead, pull one down, find something. Even if it's not perfect for you, find one that is, you know, somewhat singing that song that you're the one I wanted to find. And go through it, read through it, prepare yourself to respond to it. Um, and go ahead and try to even respond, okay? And learn the things you know first. Just cross, cross those as you know how to do that part. And then isolate the things you don't know. And if you need help with those, reach out to us. You can book a time on your tab, request a demo, and just use choose Mark. I'll walk through those with you at no, no cost to help you understand the things, maybe some of the things you don't know. I learn something new every day, too. So it's not, don't be concerned, so concerned about that. But as you're learning, focus on the items that you don't know and you'll do better. And then the one person, what is an RFP? Let's just finish this one. I'll, I'll finish our conversation today with this quote, and that is, it's a request for proposal. And it starts off with request, okay? That means that they it's a competitive marketplace. It is not a done deal, okay? They're not, they had already to make a choice. They want you to participate as a contractor, and they're looking for you to, to participate. One of the things I like to always do, just to kind of illustrate um, at, at our site, projects that people don't even respond to, everybody's responding to really at the federal level, state and local governments have a hard time sometimes. And so I'll go in and I'll just type in the word rebid. These are ones that are going back out for bid, trying to to, um, to help them. Um, and it, so you'll see the word, it's a, there's today there's 138 rebids. You know, these are, they're not even getting people to respond. So they're, they're really seeking for you to go up there and submit a response, okay? And so um, for this particular uh, class, uh, the capability statement slideshow is here, okay? So you should have access to it on a share capacity. Let me see if I, I may have to do that just a little bit differently. Uh, it is an open uh, product document, okay, done. But only to those who have the link, okay? And there it is, okay? And it's put into the chat box. Okay, so you can link through on that. And you can pop through and you can get our slides as well there. And we'll send those. There you go. Everybody's popping in now. Yeah, this is just Google. Google Drives are just the best thing. And it will really allow us to share with you and uh, work with you. So but I want to thank everybody for coming today. Any final closing thoughts, Cynthia? No, I just want to commend them for the ability to want to do this business, to never hesitate to find a mentor. Um, I don't know if I said that earlier, but the mentor protege programs are very good if you're with a healthy company. And when I say healthy, a company that's really taking the opportunity to train you um, so that you're qualified to do business without them. Um, look for the mentor protege programs throughout the federal and the state system. They are relevant for your success. Partnering is key. Hey, Mark, thanks for creating this platform. I think we should do a platform, a teaching on usaspending.gov. I'm going to get with Mark on that. So you all will see where they spent money, who were the contracting agencies, um, who wanted, how many years have they wanted, the, look at the schedules of how many years that they've been successful in the graphs. It will help you to understand your bidding and how to partner with people. I think usaspending.gov is an amazing tool for government um, contractors. Completely free to use too. Um, you know, Completely money free. money is always tight. Be careful in this market space and that you don't fall into what I would call being bidwinked. Um, but it's it's these are free tools that you can use. They're not complicated. We teach you how to use them at Gov School. You know, our schedule is always online. And I will add one specifically on USA Spending. We are doing one on um, on uh, price research itself coming up. The price and performance research is a little bit different. And as we leave today, I'm going to call attention to an entrepreneur series that we're going to do with Professor Chris Saints. He's one of our favorite uh, uh, teachers who comes with us and, and teach, uh, helps us. He's created the uh, School of Entrepreneurship at the University of Georgia, work with that, and, and also in Kennesaw State University and Georgia State. Just brings in a wealth of knowledge, and he is um, going to be here working with, I think, uh, about 26 individuals. 25 persons uh, who can participate in this class. So if you have an issue with that, reach out to us and we'll work with you on that. Um, but the notice our schedule is always online. And I, I'll also just mention some of you have come in today and said your potential, you will consult. We do have a, a Gov Advice, which is a micro consulting platform. If you have an interest in working with some of our clients, reach out to us, give us your credentials and we build that relationship. And so we wanna thank you for doing that with us today. So thanks a lot, Cynthia. And have a great birthday. I understand you're going to take off tomorrow. So yes. enjoy that day. A wellness day. day. You guys take care of yourself. Always take, take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Okay. Ha have a great day. Thank you, everyone.